the advisory committee for the Trump campaign and the senator from Alabama, Senator Jeff Sessions, joins us this morning. Senator, good to see you. Um, good to be with you, Tucker. So Russia, very surprisingly, has been at the center of this campaign, really on both sides. Donald Trump has continued to bring up and, in fact, defend Vladimir Putin. And the Hillary people have done their best to convince the country that that's the main reason not to vote for him. Why is Russia at the center of this campaign? I don't think it's even in the top 100 concerns for most voters. Well, Russia, his, uh, the reset that Hillary Clinton organized and tried to develop has gone bad. The relationship with Russia has gotten much worse uh, uh, as time has gone by. This is a cycle of hostility between the United States and Russia that's very dangerous to the world, very unhealthy. Uh, I think Donald Trump is correct to say we need, we have no strategic reason to have this, this level of hostility with Russia. But you, if we could make an attempt, uh, uh, somebody that knows how to negotiate uh, could find out if there is a possibility of reaching a more harmonious relationship. It's not going to be a perfect one. Right. Uh, we've got to be on guard. And Donald Trump knows it and has said you have to be able to walk away if Russia is not serious. So I, I think most people would agree with you. Most Americans, I don't think, see Russia as the primary threat that we face long term. And yet, and yet in Washington, Putin, who presides over a country whose life expectancy is falling, a pretty poor country, is seen as like the greatest threat to America. Why is that? Why do people in Washington so fear Vladimir Putin? I do think the Obama administration reached out to Russia and for various reasons that fell apart and they're now angry and they're uh, not uh, able uh, to create a new relationship. But for the future of the world, for peace in the world, for nuclear peace, uh, we need a better relationship with Russia than we have. And I'm a cold warrior. I've, uh, you know, stood up to the Soviets in every way I could uh, just to say, but I would say that there is a possibility we can do better and we need to work at it absolutely and donald trump uh is willing to do that and i think they're trying to attack him to show that somehow uh, that's not a wise thing to do and i think it is possible and should be attempted uh we'll just have to see how it plays out so your colleague ted cruz endorsed donald trump yesterday um and this was really a body blow to the never trump people here's here's what here's what uh, glenn beck a great supporter of ted cruz wrote yesterday profoundly sad day for me disappointment does not begin to describe maybe it's time to go to the mountains for a while kind of an ominous uh facebook posting do you think this is the beginning of a bunch of endorsements from republicans in the senate of donald trump yeah i think we'll see more people do that you know talk of the classical idea of our conservatives is you should vote the mo for the a most conservative candidate that's electable. That's the William Buckley idea. And now we have two candidates, and that's uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And the gulf is monumental between them. There's no doubt about it. Whether you're talking about judges, more taxes or less taxes, more regulations or less regulations, more government or less government, uh, effective uh, attacks and destru destruction of ISIS, those kind of things Donald Trump can get done, will get done, and Hillary Clinton's on the other side. She also, uh, I got to tell you, uh, her immigration policies are, are absolutely radical. They're to the left of uh, Barack Obama's, and it's uh, really dangerous. She wants to add from 10,000 Syrian refugees this year uh, to 65,000 next year. That is a radical uh, number. There's no way they can be vetted, no way we can assure that they're not involved in these kind of terrorist attacks yes. that we're seeing too many of. Her campaign indicated last week that everyone in the world who wants to come to the U.S. has a right to do that. I don't think most Americans agree. So Trump listens to you. You're one of the few people he listens to. What are you telling him ahead of tonight's, uh, tomorrow night's debate? Well, he's going to be himself, i got to tell you that. Um, uh, he, he, he listens, but I think he's thinking about these issues. He's been thinking about them for a long time. He's a smart man. He knows what he's doing, and I think he will be himself first and foremost. I think he'll be very effective, uh, but Hillary Clinton is a smooth debater. She's a lawyer. She's been involved in, in learning how to spin these issues and say them just right so it doesn't have uh, any political correctness impact. And um, so I think it'll be an interesting debate. I think the American people are going to tune in in large numbers. And a lot of them because they believe, and I think they're right, that Hillary Clinton's going to try and goad Donald Trump into exploding and becoming intemperate on stage. Is he, I, I assume he's prepared for that. 
I assume so. Uh, I think he's uh, uh, proven that uh, he can uh, it, talk about issues. He's been doing that day after day after day in detail as he's traveled the country listening to the people, talking directly to the American people, while I suppose she's been resting up and plotting this debate. But somebody needs to be listening to the American people. Somebody needs to be concerned about their jobs, their wages, the national security, uh, crime and uh, disorder in this country. We need prosperity and growth, not more of the same. And that's what this election is going to turn on. Donald Trump is a yep. man who achieves results. He wants to move forward and accomplish things, not just talk about them. Senator Jeff Sessions, one of the key advisors to the Trump campaign. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you. Abby Huntsman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Tucker. We do begin with a Fox News alert. Three gunmen opened fire. A reaction to a 2012 GOP presidential candidate and Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. Mr. Speaker, nice to see you this morning. What about all this fact-checking? The, the term fact-checking has been thrown out there during this campaign that, you know what, facts have kind of gone out the window in this campaign. What do you expect from the moderators? Well, for, first of all, um, if the Clinton campaign is that eager to have the moderators do the fact-checking, what does that tell you about their lack of confidence in Hillary Clinton? Hmm. Uh, she ought to be the fact checker. She's the candidate. Uh, she supposedly knows 10 times as much as Trump. Uh, she has done all these government services. Uh, she's been a senator. She's been a secretary of state. She's been a former presidential candidate. She's been a first lady. And she needs the moderator to do the fact checking. Uh, that tells you how weak they think their own candidate is. So uh, second, it's, it's, it's a stupid idea. Uh, first of all, the moderator should be modest. They're not running for president. They're not the equal of the two people who are running for president. They're simply a, a device by which the public gets to have a dialogue. Uh, they ought to ask questions that are designed to uh, bring out information or personality or in some way help us learn more about the two candidates. And they ought to let the two candidates do the fact checking. Uh, if Hillary thinks that Trump is saying something wrong, she should correct him. If Trump thinks that Hillary's saying something wrong, he should correct her. But it's pretty stupid to think that we're going to have this, this third candidate called a moderator, and their job is to double-team Donald Trump. Well, why have moderators at all? I mean, they're all sanctimonious and long-winded and self-satisfying. I mean, they, they spend half the <laughs> debate talking about themselves or asking these pointless questions. Why don't you just let the candidates get up on stage we'll learn a lot more about them they'll reveal themselves by just debating each other what's wrong with that lincoln douglas style well i mean lincoln and douglas did that although they had very long debates three hours uh <laughs> and they had a timekeeper and that was it and uh, right. they also spoke really long i mean the first guy i think got uh an hour then the second guy got an hour then they each got a half hour that'd be pretty tricky to get audiences to watch that nowadays uh, although people do watch Trump rallies, and he's a little bit like watching one of those debates. Uh, I would say that we'd be better off to let the two go at each other. Uh, and I think it would be fascinating to watch and see what happened. You know, again, you have to assume you have people who've gotten all the way through the nominating process who are pretty smart. They're pretty professional. <clears throat> if they, they could actually be on a stage without anybody else, maybe a timekeeper. Uh, but... Right. Uh, you know, the news media would never give up this opportunity to be important. Uh, and that's a key part of what these debates <laughs> no, are all about. That's sure. a good point. And speaking of the Lincoln Town Hall debates, I remember, Speaker, when you uh, debated my dad at one of those in Manchester. Remember in the 2012 campaign, yes. you both decided to do like a 90 minute debate about real policy and issues. Not surprisingly, did not get a lot of media attention to your point. Uh, but you are, you are one of the unique people that has been on a debate stage. What advice are you giving Donald Trump? for tomorrow night. What does he have to do so the next morning people are saying he had a good performance? Relax. Yeah. I think essentially Donald Trump is so much faster than Hillary Clinton uh, and his personality is so much stronger. Uh, that he just needs to relax. Don't let her get him off balance. Don't, get, don't let Lester get him off balance. Uh, be who he is. Uh, he is a guy now who's virtually tied with her for the presidency. He beat 16 other people. He got the record number of votes for a Republican in the primaries. Uh, I think if he's calm and he's relaxed, and my guess is he will be, um, that he'll be very formidable. And I think she actually is under a much greater burden than he is because everybody deep down assumes she'll do really well. I mean, if, if you come out of all of her years of public life and, and you can't beat Donald Trump, 
it sort of undermines your argument that he's not presidential. So how do you relax? I mean, this is going to be one of the most widely viewed things ever to happen in human history. How, what specifically would you tell him to unwind? Take a sauna, have a glass of wine? Like, how do you do that? Uh, yoga. Well, I, I used to, when, when I ran, as you know, we had uh, something like 20 debates. And my two key debate coaches were my uh, granddaughter, Maggie, and my grandson, Robert. Uh, Maggie told me to smile, so every time I got up, the first thing I do is write a smiley face in Maggie. Uh, and, and Robert, who was uh, at Aww. that time, I think, 11, uh, said uh, shorter and clearer. So I'd write that down and to put Robert's name. And I remember one of the debates, Callista and I ended up uh, in the hotel room watching Bridesmaids uh, as a part of our <laughs> debate prep. Uh, and then I, tried to, I tried to always have at least one Diet Coke, uh, so I had that extra energy. That was it. I, you know, that's yeah. pretty good. I love it. Got Rides, maids, and Diet Coke. That's the key. The family. Uh, here's, the, here's the number. The number one rule for Trump is simple. It's the same rule as Reagan. Do not over prepare. Hmm. Don't let your staff fill your head with a bunch of junk you're not going to remember. Be who you are. Stick to big, broad principles that differentiate you from Hillary, and you'll be fine. All right, that's okay. good advice. From one of the great debaters, Newt Gingrich. Thanks a lot, Mr. Thanks Speaker. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Season. All right, final preparations underway right now at Hofstra University for tomorrow night's debate. So we scrambled Bill Hemmer for a special yes. Sunday appearance. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, guys. Hempstead has never looked better on a Sunday morning. Morning <laughs> to all of you. I was just inside the arena. In a moment here, I'll tell you what uh, the... In Fox News alert now. Despite the release of the body cam and dash cam footage of the Charlotte police shooting, the protests continue now. Some are asking if the left's rhetoric, focusing on what divides the nation rather than what unifies it, encourages anti-police demonstrations. Author and filmmaker of Hillary's America, Dinesh D'Souza, joins us now to discuss. Dinesh, great to see you, as always, here on the show. You know, Donald Trump suggesting that Hillary is partly to blame for this, uh, following this unrest, saying that she supports the idea that cops are, you know, a racist force in the United States. Is he right or wrong? Well, I think he's right because there is a, all these situations have a lot of facts that are on the ground that become obscured when you have demonstrators uh, who are generally relying on very limited information. Uh, in, the, uh, in one of the shooters, the, uh, the cop was a female. Now, there's a lot of research that shows that females are much more reluctant than males in general to use force. Um, in the um, North Carolina case, the shooter was African-American, as was the victim. Uh, and so we have to, uh, on the one hand, we have to sympathize with young African Americans who feel uh, a, f a fear of cops living in the inner city. But on the other hand, we also have to identify with the unimaginable difficulty of being a cop uh, in that difficult environment where your life is constantly at a, at a trigger's edge. Hmm. President Obama was responding to both what unfolded in Charlotte and Tulsa at the museum's uh, reception yesterday, yeah, the African American History uh, Museum in, in, uh, in Washington, and he had this to say. We'll get your response. Watch. My hope is that as people are seeing what's happened in Tulsa or Charlotte, may step back and say, I understand. Yeah. I sympathize. I empathize. I can see why folks might feel angry. And I want to be part of the solution as opposed to resisting change. Part of the solution. You know, the criticism on the left has been that they focus. You have Al Sharpton showing up in these areas or you know, uh, Jesse Jackson coming in and focusing on what divides us. What was the president's? Were you surprised by the president's response there? Well, there's a profound one-sidedness because he wants to empathize uh, in this case uh, with the, uh, he wants to emphasize with the conditions in the inner cities, but there's also an empathy that needs to be extended to the police because the police are being thrown in an impossible situation. These are unlivable neighborhoods. By the way, typically neighborhoods that have been created by the Democrats that are run by the Democrats, life is very difficult in those places, uh, and it's very difficult to be a cop in those environments. So. Uh, th this understanding has to be a two-way street. You get the sense with Obama that he's talking with one eye closed. Hmm. Well, we're certainly going to hear more about this tonight at the debate. What do you expect you'll hear from Donald Trump on this tomorrow night? 
I think Trump needs to expose, you know, the liberals often talk about looking at the root causes of these social problems. Uh, and I think the root causes of these social problems is that you've got these dilapidated, dilapidated neighborhoods in which there's no opportunity. Everybody gets a meager living, but nobody gets a good education. Nobody gets ahead. Uh, and, and this is actually the fruits of Democratic policies over a generation. I think Trump needs to lay the blame right at the foot of the Democratic Party. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza, always great seeing you here on the show. For more on Dinesh's movie, visit Hillary's America, the movie.com. Thanks so much, Dinesh. Thank you. Coming up here on the show, Hillary Clinton just dropped a bombshell.